Jasmine Khan. Yes, I chair the president of the Federal of Bringing His Medalist. Well, it's good to see you. Hi. Well, nice to see you. I even got a stack of the proclamations there on my <laughs> desk. Do you all have those? Or, or not yet. Not, not, yet. not, to, not <laughs> until you sign one. <laughs> not until you sign one. <laughs> they're all signed. Oh, they're all signed. Right. Great. 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 No, we haven't, we haven't received Great. that yet. Yeah. We've got a I little signing. Yeah. 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 I, I think they want to have everybody move down this way and kind of set on this door here. I guess, guess we've got a little work to do. Well, this is one that they lost this in the middle. And I don't know whether you can sign it standing up or not. I think so. <laughs> okay. okay, that's wonderful. Anywhere. There's a little presentation that Mrs. Berlinger and Osmond have for you. Well, for heaven's <laughs> sakes. It's well. a special box. It's a little shovel. <laughs> Each one. Has, you know, you can see it right well, here. thank you very much. Thank you. Now, yes to resistance. Osmond. Osmond, yeah. well, you're going to present this to the president. <laughs> I got extra large size for Yasmin. Uh, yes, this is on behalf of ADRDA. Well. In recognition of National Alzheimer's Disease Month. Well, thank you very much. And there's one other. <laughs> <laughs> this is one we're going to. Thanks, Mr. President, for National Alzheimer's Disease Month. Thank you very much. Well. On behalf of all of us. Well, thank you. <laughs> this is for you to wear jogging. Yes. <laughs> this one, where's my felt pen? Well, that's if we can get you to sign this. Maybe. Which one are we going to sign? This one? This one. This one, this one here. Is there a felt pen? That I see. Mildred, do you have that felt pen? Oh, here. Yes. yes. This is the kind of work. Right. Where would you like this? <laughs> <laughs> This very often, have you? Now and then. <laughs> I think that's all coming out, too. Wonderful. Great. Thank, Thank you very much. much. That's Thank just you. absolutely wonderful. Right. Right. Well, well, you know, Mr. President, you signed the uh, <coughs> bill last Friday for Alzheimer's. That was a drug immunization, immunization yes. bill. And the Alzheimer's rider was attached to it. I know you had missed, uh, kind of misgivings about signing part of it. Yes. We're glad we you signed our yes. Yes. yes, thank you. <laughs> but, uh, you know, sometimes it's a kind of a catch-all. It's an ill wind that blows no good. So we feel very good about the Alzheimer's portion of it. Well, all right. Did, did I hear any of you say that you'd like a 
copy of the proclamation. We love it. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Right. <laughs> I don't think you want to pass it up to everybody. I don't think you have enough copies, have you? Yeah. Yes, they do. Good. There's enough. Yeah, that's wonderful. <clears throat> This time passing because <laughs> government. I have more trouble separating the last one. I get two pages together. I'm also getting to where everything reminds me of a story or experience when you uh, when you were talking about whether that could autograph or I could autograph standard. Thank you. I came out of the picture business with one story that I've always treasured about signing an order. I was walking to Fifth Avenue in New York. About 30 feet ahead of me, he's going to come in. He's going to be stopped. And he says, Ah, I know you. And he just yelled at me. And of course, you know New York. Everybody stopped. <laughs> and I just kind of formed two sides here. Like a grandson. Now he starts down the middle of the lane toward me. And all the way he's talking and he's fumbling in his pocket. I see you all the time on that screen and on that television. And he says, I know who you are. He gets right up to me. He comes out with a piece of paper and a pen. And he says, Ray Milan. So I signed Ray Milan. I thought he was going to say, Home Tuttle. Just have a President of your fan club now. We have a story. <laughs> well, this is just one of the last to do. Don't you know? God has his hand back there. Blessing us with his hand. And you certainly and help. You Appreciate the help. You've yes. given us all the help that we really need. Thank you. And more. <laughs> well, this administration has done more for us. Dollars of research. As a matter of fact, we in the last two years there's been more dollars spent on research in the United States than 80 years since Alzheimer's was discovered. So yeah, we didn't get that close enough. So we're too young. Touche. Touche. Since the beginning, did you see Barbara Walters in the big 50-year life program that was on? Yeah, that's right. We didn't hear it over when Bob Hope was on. <laughs> and Bob Hope, one of his lines to the audience was, I'm almost old enough to run for president. <laughs> <laughs> well, we enjoy spoofing you, that's for sure. That's a wonderful new book, then. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess your day is first starting now, Mr. President. No, I'm getting kind of close to the end. <laughs> <laughs> uh, things are a little easier when the Congress is away. <laughs> oh. We'll write our congressman about that. <laughs> incidentally, speaking of that life thing, I've got one on life that I think we ought to be sorry about. That uh, could have been, I just thought of it last, watching this show, what a great thing it would have been. Back when, you know, in, in Hollywood, in the picture set, sometimes they'd have to have magazines around. So the prop department just had stacks of old magazines, and they'd come in and put them around to make it look homelike. And, and so one day, sitting there between shots, there was an old Life magazine on the, on the set. And this was right after the war. And I picked up, and I'm looking through, and the letters to the editor. There was not only a letter, but a picture, a photograph, where these kids, young fellas, were in this magazine that was dated back before World War II. They had created a thing like a, a foxhole with sandbags and everything, and then had draped themselves all over this, all as if they were dead. And they had written a letter to life and said, we wonder if this is a prophecy of what's going to happen to us. Now, well, here I am, the war is over in this magazine. And see, I called in our people in the, uh, the studio there, and I said, hey, look, somebody get a hold of them. Because it would be wonderful for them, the names were all there, to find out now what did happen. Are they still alive? What happened to them now that the war is, is over? And you know the answer we got back from whoever they contacted at life? 
said, well, we're not interested in giving publicity to some picture that's being made in Hollywood. Oh. They <laughs> thought that, because the fellow explained to them where the magazine was and that I'd found it and so forth, I didn't even think our names even would come into it. Just it was an idea for them. And I still regret they were so silly not to do it. It might have been quite a story. It was silly, no question about it. Great idea. It didn't listen carefully. <coughs> <laughs> too many people didn't like how it was. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. All the best. Thank you so much. Thank you. Always a treat. The very best. Got our t-shirt. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> I'll send you a piece. <laughs> I gave last night with a million pieces. Fear of election. It worked out well. We appreciate you coming to the dinner and helping us raise the money that uh, lets put the focus. Pleased to do it. Uh, I think it's going to make a difference for them. I think be able to create some kind of a, an agenda coming back to us. That's really what I thought we might touch base on. Since you don't have the Senate as friendly as you did before, we might be able to use the governors to help you set an agenda. In I'd be very pleased with it. I have an item to add to your agenda. Oh, I've been cold. I'm awful lot worse than that. Good to see you. <laughs> Beside, I guess I'm a, a majority majority leader. Majority leader. Yeah, still. Uh, yeah. Well, technically. Today, bro. We're going to take a seat. We're going to bring some stuff for that. There's a teeny bit of time. There won't be any speakers from the uh, third until the. <laughs> That's the end of the Congress. <laughs> the end of the Congress, you see. Mr. Tip O'Neill no longer will be a member of the House and that we will not be elected another speaker, so we will just have to struggle along as best we can <laughs> for three days. <laughs> just call <laughs> All right. I'm sure you'll, you'll, you'll grieve. <laughs> will you guarantee there'll be no speaking when there's no speaker? Well, that's a pretty good point. Uh, we will have a, we'll have a session with the House. Everybody will be recovering for New Year's. Yeah. <laughs> the silence will be golden. Thank you, gentlemen. I think I'm clicking. Oh. I'm going to pick out a good one on that. But I have a feeling we're probably going to be seeing a bit more of each other. And, uh, Piece of this I thought that maybe we could sit here and find out from some of you uh, what's on the agenda. budget and how to reform it. Why don't we go right ahead? I don't have a chance to hear from all of you. All right, Mr. President, I'll attempt as usual to summarize as you've already said in the group. Universal outlook, universal opinions. This time in the economic outlook, I would say 
this group is closer to consensus than most times we've met before. And they tend to follow a scenario that says that next year will not be very different from this year. You have shades of difference. If you reduced it to numbers, it would have to 1% now on the GNP or on inflation. There are a couple of uh, members 